Hello YouTube, this is Remington H. Wanted to do another video, show some updates to my HOA HF station. This is my backyard. I have a MFJ 1979. It's about 20 foot fully extended uh, telescoping whip attached to a Wolf River Coils Silver Bullet 1000. You adjust this collar up and down, depending on the band you're working. I also adjust the telescoping antenna whip up and down to fine tune it. At this position, it's 40 meters. And at that position, my telescoping whip is almost fully extended. For 20 meters, I just run a jumper, alligator clip jumper cable, bypassing the coil entirely, and then I shorten the whip to resonate the antenna for about, you know, 14 megahertz, whatever it is I'm transmitting at, usually about 14074, 14076 for the digital modes. I'm able to generally get, without any matching at all, 1.5 to 1 or less on 20 meters at the feed point. Have some ferrite beads. It's been suggested that adding these reduces common mode current. I really haven't seemed to have a problem with that. I went ahead and added a bunch of them anyway after reading some things online. Feed point runs to this makeshift waterproof enclosure I have for the MFJ909 antenna matcher. It's a capacitive antenna matcher. And then I run LMR400 back to the, the shaft, about a 30 foot run. On 20 meters, this amounts to essentially a quarter wave vertical. And it seems to work pretty well, given my restrictions on antennas. When I'm not transmitting, I just, you know, retract the width and you can't see it. It's really difficult to see even extended as it is now. There's some trees obscuring it. Um, I've driven on this road in the past trying to look for it and I can't see it. I mean, unless you're really looking for it, unless you know it's there, you can't see it. So in my HOA situation, it's worked quite well and it actually works pretty well on 40 meters as well. Uh, 80 meters, I, with the amplifier, I'm able to make contacts and I do get fairly decent reports, but of course it's not very efficient on 80 meters. Uh, it's a little more efficient on 40, but I'm sure not great. And on 20 meters, it's a full, week, full length quarter way vertical. This is the setup as it currently stands in the shack. Have the IC7300 connected to a Ameritron AL811, not the H, and I am using it with digital modes. As you can see, I have FT8 running right now. It's about 5.25 p.m. on 20 meters, and band conditions haven't been great last past week or so that I've noticed, but quite a bit of activity right now. I've been transmitting a bit, and this is where my signal seems to be propagating. I'm getting some pretty good... I was plus two, plus three in Japan a little while ago before it disappeared and getting some strong signals all throughout the United States. There's ham spots. Um, I saw a plus 11 or so. There's a plus 5 there. Plus 1, plus 5. Seems to be working pretty well. It usually gets stronger. The propagation improves as the evening goes on after around 6 or so. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to contact this Mold Moldova station, but haven't been successful. The IC7300 runs directly into the MFJ IntelliTuner. This is the 929. I do that primarily to touch up the SWR between the transmitter and the amplifier. The MFJ891 is then connected to the VersaTuner 2, which is a 300 watt antenna matcher, I have in line a MFJ891 SWR watt meter, and this is actually what 
the Ameritron 8011Cs, I can get a good idea about what the amplifier is seen directly from the antenna through the MFJ891. I don't really run more than 300 watts or so out of the Ameritron amplifier. This is a 300 watt tuner. I do tune the amplifier at about 500 watts key down carrier. And actually that is through the 300 watt tuner. I, it hasn't been a problem, I think because I have such a good tune directly from the antenna, the Versa Tuner 2 isn't doing really much to match the antenna. It's just a touch up. I generally see right out of the feed point of the antenna after the capacitive matcher at the feed point between 1.1 and 1.5 SWR, usually around 1.3 or so on 20 meters and, and lower or better than that on 40 and 80 meters when I operate those, those bands. So I'd like to upgrade this at some point, but so far it hasn't been a problem. If the antenna was non-resonant, that might be a problem. So I've been fortunate there. Some of you may be wondering how reasonable it is to use a tube amplifier like this on digital modes. Key down FT8, you know, it's about 13 seconds. FT4, what is it, about four seconds key down per transmission. I don't use it, or and I haven't used it on other digital modes, the like the FL Digi modes, PSK31 or the Olivia or any of those, those are longer key down. So I haven't, I haven't been willing to, to transmit those digital modes through the amplifier. For continuous commercial service with the 811A tubes uh, rated at 45 watts dissipation, I believe that should provide up to 170 watts safely of output. Uh, for intermittent commercial and amateur service, at 65 watts dissipation per tube, um, that's about 390 watts key down. I'm so not really cool. willing to go above 300 watts, and typically I run it at about 110 to 150 watts output on the digital modes. The tubes glow a dull red for a few seconds at that power output, and it seems to be fine. I'm not doing contesting here, so there's plenty of cool down between transmissions, and it seems to have been working fine. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick tune here, just so you can see uh, what my what my levels are, if you can. 25% RF power output from the transmitter means about 15 watts or so output driving the amplifier. Give it a quick tune, I'm not on top of anybody's QSO. It's loafing along. Plate current allowable maximum is 550 yes. milliamps. And as you can see, at this power level, what is that, 175 or so? Grid current maximum is 150 milliamps. Less than 50 milliamps. I pushed it up to 31% RF power, which typically gives me what should be around 200 watts of output from the Ameritron. Give it a quick tune. This is an SSB key down carrier, so it's not it's not directly from the from the IC7300. It's from the the digital mode WSJTX software. 23 watts, 24 watts output of the transmitter. With that drive, yeah, a little over 200 watts. And here's what we look like, what we're looking at. Again, on the left plate current, 550 milliamps maximum, and we're seeing less than 200 milliamps. Grid current, 150 milliamps maximum allowed, and we're only seeing 
less than 50. So it should be pretty reasonable for the Ameritron AL811 3 tube amplifier. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe call CQ here and see what PSK Reporter and hamspots.net is going to tell me. We find a CQ. clear frequency here. Wait for the opportunity. Okay, we're transmitting CQ. Still running 24, 31% output. Missed that, that's about 200 watts. Go ahead and halt, just in case anybody responds, I doubt it. Somebody did. Let's go and see if PSK Reporter has updated. Looks like it has, although I'm nothing showed up outside of the Americas. I was seeing some Europe and Asia receiving my signal. I had a plus O2 in Japan a little bit earlier. That may update again. I may see that. Here we go. SV2HXX. What is that, Greece? Showing a reasonable minus 12. Ham spots has updated. Again, the bands haven't been great. Uh, plus 16 in California, plus 7 in New York, and I'm seeing Puerto Rico, Canada, Fiji. Japan, minus nine, receiving my signal. I'll do another video on my setup of IC, the IC7300 with the digital mode applications, primarily WSJTX and FL Digi, show you the levels I have set in both the computer and the uh, transceiver and some of the settings I have in the software. So you can get an idea how to con configure it. Obviously, everybody's hardware is yes. going to be a little different, but it might give you a good starting point. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching 7.3.